You've probably heard me talking about this self-sufficient living skills bundle that's been going on, and I have been spending the last week flipping through so many of the incredible resources within this bundle. Now, I will say there's a lot. There's over 118 different ebooks and courses and lessons sharing incredible wisdom and knowledge with you, so you can live off the land and you don't have to rely on this corrupt and broken system for everything for your family. Anyways, I wanted to share some of my favorite things. One, first off, is off-grid homeopathy. This course is loaded with so much incredible knowledge, talking about homeopathy for first aid, for colds and flu, how to make your own homeopathic remedies. Like, as an herbalist who loves to teach that stuff, that's pretty exciting to hear it in the homeopathy realm. There's also some incredible fermentation guides, so many other amazing herbal recipes and food recipes and how to make your own sourdough bread, how to do your own organic gardening and canning of all of your foods. Really, there is so much. And yes, I know, I know. I've talked about it a ton, but this entire bundle is only $50 right now until Sunday, March 24th. I'm sharing my herbal first aid skills, which is a course that's $47 on its own. I'm sharing recipes that I used when I got my products into REI for herbal first aid kits and so much more. Y'all have to check it out. I'm serious. Like you can absolutely change your life with this bundle. So there is a link in the show notes for you and I hope you check it out. I hope you take advantage. Don't worry. You don't have to go through everything right away. You can access everything for up to a year. Once you're in the course or have the download, it's yours for life. It is a steal of a deal. Okay, self-sufficient living skills bundle in the links for you. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in to The Herbalist Path, where we're on a mission to create a movement where there is an herbalist in every home again. And I'm so excited for you to tune into this episode. It is the first of a three-part series of herbs for back-to-school time. How timely, right? Anyways, this one right here is going to be all about herbs to maintain your brain. Or as my good friend Tanya has coined, herbs to brain-tain. You can totally use that one later on. And definitely be ready to tune in to the next couple of episodes when we have our section two of this series, which will be herbs to keep you sane. And following that with herbs to keep your immune system in check. Anyways, thanks again for tuning in. And let's make herbalism hashtag spread like Wildflowers. Welcome to the Herbalist's Path, where we're on a mission to inspire a movement where there's an herbalist in every home, again, with your host, clinical herbalist, Melissa Mutterspa. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of The Herbalist Path, and I am honored and super excited to have you here. I think that we have a pretty important topic to discuss, and that topic is your brain and keeping your brain health in check. Because let's face it, there is so much going on in our world today that maybe if you're like me, it's just outrageously challenging to keep focused and centered. Our brains are being scrambled in ways we've never imagined before. Whether you're busy thinking of all the things back to school and you, you're homeschooling and you have to find the right curriculum and does this curriculum have all the right attributes to it? Is it the right one for my child? Maybe you've got multiple children that learn in different ways or maybe you're going with the new online learning platforms and then you've got the fun joy of learning whole new technological systems. And if you're anything like me, learning new technology can drive you absolutely bonkers and make your head just spin. 
And never mind trying to figure out how you're going to manage the new schedules with homeschool or online learning, keeping your kids engaged, and keeping your home life together. Now, you've also got to add to that working from home. Maybe you're one of the lucky ones and you've been able to make that adjustment nice and smooth and seamlessly. Maybe you haven't. Either way you look at it, the list of things to boggle our brains and keep us away from staying focused and centered is ever growing and changing. And then if you really want to get crazy about it, we can add to the outrageous political turmoil happening in the United States right now, all of the insane amounts of racism and people being murdered and anger everywhere. There are things flashing up all over the place that can just really distract you from the things that are most important and staying focused on those things. It is really, really hard. And then if you're, you know, if you're anything like me, With all of those responsibilities and knowing what's happening in our world today, you're wondering what in the world you can do to help with all of the unrest happening. It's so hard. No matter what your position is during these times, the fact of the matter is that you still have to maintain your brain in an attempt to stay sane. And it is far from easy. The super cool news is that there are herbs that can help you to stay focused on what you need to do. There are herbs that can help improve your memory and help your ability to just get shit done. We all need to do that. So right now is the beginning of a three-part series I'm doing on all of the herbs that I think are necessary for back to school time. This is the first in the series, and it's all about herbs I use to what we say now, brain tain. I got to credit my friend Tanya to the term brain tain instead of maintain your brain. Anyways, part two of the series will be herbs to help you stay sane. And then in part three, I'm going to discuss herbs to help you keep your immune system in check. Whether you're homeschooling and you're being very adamant about social distancing and keeping away from others or not, the fact of the matter is it's fall, about to be fall, the season is cooling, and cold and flu and sickness really come up more and more during this time of the year. So I think we're going to pack a lot of value into this series as we go along, and I hope that you feel the same way. So... Since it's back to school time and it's all about learning and growing, let's start talking about herbs that can maintain your brain. These herbs can even help you to organize all of the things on your to-do list so you're not just stuck swimming in some crazy sea of chaos. So, on to the herbs to help brain tain. Man, it's that time of year again. Yeah, I'm talking about back to school. And this year, it's filled with all sorts of new challenges. Are there any parents out there like me that are spinning in circles, wondering what we're going to do about all this? Well, it's hard on a brain and a body, and sometimes right down to my soul. But the fine folks at Mountain Mel's have put together my saving grace in tea form. Their new Maintain Your Brain Tea Bundle is a complete hug in a mug package. Where is my mind for mental clarity and focus? Digesties to soothe those belly butterflies and unfrazzle your dazzle when it's time to chill out and recharge. This power pack really does hit all those sweet spots, mind, body, and soul. So head on over to mountainmels.com and check out Maintain Your Brain and their other bundles and kits. Save 15% by using code THP15 at checkout as our thanks for listening. We think you deserve it. So the first herb I wanted to share with you is a really wonderful herb. I'm quite sure you've heard of it. It is ginkgo biloba. And if you didn't know this already, ginkgo is one of the world's oldest living trees. 
It's an actual living fossil, and it hasn't changed for more than 200 million years. It's absolutely that cool little leaf you see on all the earrings and the trendy dresses and all of those kinds of things around. It looks kind of like a fossil. Really, really beautiful. The reason ginkgo is so wonderful, or some of the reasons ginkgo is so wonderful for your brain, is that it's shown to bring blood up to your brain and circulate it around there. That helps to protect your brain and improve your overall cognitive function. There have been studies that have shown ginkgo can improve your memory and speed your ability to process all of the information you're trying to stuff into your old head. It's commonly been used as an Alzheimer's preventative, and it can even help those with the disease to improve their brain health. Ginkgo can work wonders to help you stay focused and to retain information. I can't help but think that maybe because it's the world's oldest living tree, that part of its power of enhancing our brain and our memory is because it's able to pass down the memories of its 200 million years plus of existence to us. Maybe that's some crazy hippie stuff right there. Maybe it's not. I don't know. You tell me. Anyways, on to herb number two in this brain taining series I'd love to chat about is an herb I am sure you have heard a lot about. And if you're lucky, your taste buds absolutely love it. It's rosemary. Yeah, the same rosemary that is loved for its culinary delight in Mediterranean foods and beyond. But did you know that Not only does rosemary taste great, but it can help improve your memory. Pretty awesome, eh? It's shown that there are certain constituents in the rosemary plant that help improve overall cognitive function. And as an extra bonus, it can help reduce anxiety and just to uplift your mood. Back when I was really deep into my herbal studies, I was in this pretty intensive clinical herbal program and... You know, the days would be long. We'd meet on the weekends and just have really, really long days of herbs, 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 which, you know, I mean, there could be worse things, but anyways, you get tired. And so I would take walks on our breaks in this beautiful, sunny Alberta district around Portland, Oregon, and fortunately around there, everybody loved a garden, and there were rosemary shrubberies everywhere. So as I'm taking my walk, getting my blood flowing, rege- regenerating some some energy and pizzazz in my day, I would stop and grab a little sprig of rosemary in certain yards and, you know, just take in that beautiful scent and tuck it behind my ear to keep me sharp for the rest of my class time. Uh, it worked like a charm. I loved it. So I'm going to advise you to maybe head over to the kitchen cupboard, or if you're lucky, head out to your yard and find a little rosemary shrubbery right now and tuck it behind your ear as you listen to this little commercial break from our fantastic sponsor. Wow, what a great chunk of knowledge we just heard. I love learning new things, especially better ways to take care of myself and my family. But if you're like me, I love the knowledge, but I'm often too busy to put it into practice, making my own salves and teas and such. Thank goodness, the lovely folks over at Mountain Mel's are already doing it for me. Their herbal teas support my mind, body, and soul, and they taste great too. And their line of outdoor essential products supports my family's outdoor fun and quickens our recovery afterwards when we overdo it. So hop on over to mountainmels.com and use the code THP15 at checkout to receive a 15% discount, especially for listeners of The Herbalist's Path. That's THP15 for 15% off your order of delicious goodness today. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little commercial break. 
And now, back to herbs to brain chain. <laughs> Anyways, the next herb I wanted to share with you is Centella asiatica, also known as go-to cola. And this plant is really powerful for so many reasons from its like skin healing and wound healing abilities and far beyond. But since this is all about herbs for back to school and brain health, let's get back to that. So go to cola is amazing because it also can do wonders to enhance your memory. It's also wonderful as an antidepressant and an anti-anxiety helper as well. So if you're someone who suffers from test anxiety or you just get really nervous under pressure and or you're just super stressed about all of the new decisions and changes in our world and life today that you have to deal with, Having some go-to cola on board can help you breeze through those tough times with much more ease. It's also another one of those herbs that's commonly used for patients with Alzheimer's and to improve your overall cognitive function and can even be known to help prevent Alzheimer's if used well enough and right. The next herb I'd like to share with you guys is Bacopa monieri. I think I said that right. I kind of have have fallen in the world of herbalism to potato, potato, when it comes to Latin pronunciations. Anyways, Bacopa, or Brahmi, as it's commonly known, is found in many countries and continents across the globe, and it really loves to grow a lot in wetland areas, and it produces this beautiful little white flower, um, really, really cool little plant. It's been used in Ayurvedic practices for centuries, and there's even been shown um, various historical texts that date back as far back as the 6th, 6th century AD. But today, research has shown its beneficial use in Alzheimer's disease, memory loss, anxiety, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, and even it's been shown to be beneficial for depression. It helps to bring blood and circulation up to your brain. Bacopa or Brahmi is also rich in antioxidants, which work to prevent free radical damage to your cells throughout your body and in the brain, thus helps protect the brain from deterioration. Brahmi is also famed for its ability to improve memory retention. And Bacopa is definitely a magnificent friend to have when you're cramming for your next test or just trying to stay organized. Um, or any other situations you're trying to deal with improving your brain health. So there are several ways that you can take all of these herbs. You can take them in tincture form. You can take them as a tea, which is obviously my favorite. Or, you know, if you don't mind popping pills, you can certainly do that too. But whichever way you choose to ingest these herbs, just make sure that wherever you get your herbs from, that they are sustainably grown and sourced and made by some damn good herbalists. For me, admittedly, I like to start every day with a good cup of coffee. For me, it's kind of like the ignition key to my motor for the day. Then I take a good walk on the river with my pups. And on my best days, I get a little meditation time on that walk as well. But then once I'm rolling with my day and it's really trying to get, it's time for me to get my work groove on, I move on to my Where Is My Mind blend. And in there, I use go-to cola, ginkgo, and rosemary, along with peppermint, ashwagandha, nettles, and red clover. But those three herbs are the primary ones that really help me to stay sharp and focused throughout my day. And then I don't get those crazy jitters that you can get from too much caffeine. Like, I can tell a serious difference in the way I perform and get my work done on a day where I've had one cup too many of coffee and then my brain is just like scrambled eggs trying to like run around doing absolutely nothing of productivity. But if I drink the where is my mind, I'm like, cool, boom, that's off my to-do list, that's off my to-do list, that's off my to-do list, and suddenly I have the most productive of days. It's amazing. 
So if after you're finished listening to this and you're eager to get some of these herbs into your head, I got to recommend you try our Where Is My Mind blend. Not only is it awesome for keeping you focused and clear, it's delicious. I mean, it's peppermint and rosemary. Come on, what more could you ask for, right? Anyways, um, I really hope that this podcast has helped you get an idea as to how you're going to brain through all of life's transitions. And if you dig this podcast, please subscribe and leave me a rating on your favorite podcast player, whichever one that may be. And go ahead and head over to our Facebook page at The Herbalist Path. And let me know your tips and tricks for staying sharp and focused. And of course, if you found this information helpful, share it with your friends. Together, we can make herbalism. Hashtag spread like wildflowers. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day. This has been The Herbalist's Path where we're on a mission to inspire an herbalist in every home, again. Thanks so much for joining us. If you'd like to support our mission, please subscribe, rate, and review to help others find us. Together, we can make herbalism hashtag spread like wildflowers. Wishing you all a lovely day. Bye for now. It has been so much fun and so, I don't know, joyous watching all of my medicinal plant friends popping up in my garden from the Ella Campaign to the Comfrey and the Arnica. I love seeing these friends pop up. And if you are still trying to decide what to grow in your medicinal herb garden, you've got to grab my guide. It's all about the most essential herbs that every mom should know and should grow. So I teach you how to grow them and the many different ways that you can use them. If you want to grab the guide, go ahead. It's free and I'm pretty sure you're going to get a lot of delight and use out of it. And there's a link to it in the show notes. I'm wishing you tons of happy medicine planting.